name is John Wright, and I am the producer at Only Central College, and for Fiddler on the Roof, I am the director. Uh, two very different jobs that have to work together. Um, as a producer, I do show picks, so I have to read scripts and decide what would sell to our audience, what can our cast what works for the, our potential cast that we have, what works for our space, because our theater is relatively small when it comes to stage, so we have to make a lot of decisions that way. Um, I also assemble the production team. Uh, our production team uh, for community theater, um, anywhere, uh, multiple hours away, is one of the top production teams you're gonna find. While I was familiar with Fiddler on the Roof, it was not a show that I'd fallen in love with years ago and watched a hundred times. It's based on a group of stories by Shalom Alakam. And he was in the late 1800s and he was writing about Tevye, the dairyman. And then it became Tevye and his daughters. And then that turned into Fiddler on the Roof in 1960s. One of my big jobs as the director this time was the research side of it. And so it starts with a script read, and I always have a notebook with me uh, when I, whenever I do my first real script read. And so I'm going through the pages, and I take notes of anything I don't know what it means, or anything that I don't totally understand. And I take notes and take notes. And I noticed when I finished reading Act One that I had a lot of notes. And that was a little concerning for me because I realized I had a lot of research to do. Um, Act two was the same way. Uh, just a lot of their, the traditions, and so much of this show is based on the culture and traditions of um, Eastern Europe in 1905 that, again, we don't understand. And so it was important that um, the homework was done so we can portray the story properly to our audience, but also that our cast understands the story. The setting of Fiddler is a shtetl, which is a Jewish community in, in again, early 1900s. These were poor people, um, but they were content. And they were Jewish, and really their life revolved around their culture and their traditions. And it was important that the first thing was our set helped tell that story. And Sam Benson has done a fabulous job um, with a little more of an artistic look than sometimes we do. Uh, it's an abstract set. It's not what we uh, traditionally do here. And I absolutely love it because it does a great job of explaining the setting without being too complicated. This show is about tradition. This show is about Tevi, our main character, and his five daughters, and what traditions we have to keep and what traditions we are able to change. And while they were doing that in 1905, we still make those decisions today. So normally our first rehearsal is a read-through, where we read through the script, and then we sing the songs as well. Um, we did not do the singing this time. We didn't do a sing-through. Uh, because we did a study guide instead uh, that explained the culture um, and the tradition and kind of gave the entire backstory of that region. Um, it also went into some of the original director Joan, Jerome Robbins' goals. Um, one of the things I love that, that you see throughout our show several times is you keep seeing circles on stage and his idea behind that was that you have the inner circle which is his immediate family and then you have the second um, circle which is his uh, the community and then the third circle is the Jewish community and as the show goes on those circles become broken and you actually see the symbolism of those circles being broken as this story breaks down one of the most important things to me is storytelling. Uh, too often, especially in community theater settings, uh, musicals become concerts without the story. And for me, I think we should be able to strip away the set, the costumes, everything. And it has to be story focused. Um, that's how you can really touch someone. Then when you add all the extra pieces on top of it, it can go over the top, but it has to be story-based. And that starts with making sure that the cast understands the story, 
uh, making sure that your leads um, not only understand the story, but that they are they can relate that story um, within themselves and to our audience. We've worked really hard the last several years uh, to really uh, make this place not just a place where Richland County people come and want to audition to be a part of our shows, but somewhere um, where people within our region want to come. Uh, this cast is um, just absolutely amazing. Their work ethic, uh, their desire to get better, uh, everything is, is there and it's going to show on stage. One of the things I'm really excited about is we are continuing to see growth and we're seeing that growth in by having, we have 12 towns and 8 counties represented in this show. Uh, for a little only Illinois, it's unheard of that people are willing to drive from Mattoon and the other side of Vincent's uh, to come here to be a part of us. And that's, you know, they're, they're driving multiple times per week to be a part of our shows. Um, part of that is the work that we've done over the last several years um, has uh, encouraged people that they want to be a part of what we're doing. Um, again, it goes back to our production team and the quality work that they are doing kind of goes back to even the community aspect of it and our budgets for a community theater are large and that is because we fill a lot of seats we have a lot of community financial support and sponsorships and advertising and when you put all of that together you end up um, with this this growth where other people from other communities want to be a part of what you're doing and so that's really exciting and then this cast um, they're just incredibly hard workers. Uh, a lot of talent too. Um, talent always helps. When people come as an audience member to our theater, one of the things I talk about quite a bit is our moral obligation to not suck. And when I talk to cast about that, obviously it's kind of a semi-funny uh, line, but it's based on the idea that we have a moral obligation that when people pay money for a ticket and they come in and they're going to give us a couple of hours of their time that our audience members we know some of them have real world problems they have maybe a sickness in the family they have financial issues uh, they're worried about uh, their their kids or their their parents whatever the situation is um, and it's important that for the two hours they are here, they get to forget their problems and they get to see another world and what problems they're having. And basically that they can forget their, their real life issues for the two hours they're here. Now once they leave, um, those issues come back. But hopefully we are a relief for them during those two hours where they can find joy or they can empathize with a character, especially in, in a show like Fiddler, um, understanding the struggles that Tevye is going through or the struggles that the daughters are going through or the wife or um, all the different characters in the show. And um, because maybe there's something going on in their life that's very similar that they're struggling with. Um, and they, again, they can um, maybe find some empathy uh, with these people.